I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Please do your own research. A quick note that every title screen is using stock footage, which isn't directly related to the subject at hand. Redwire Corporation is a space solutions company listed on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol RDW. Redwire merged with a SPAC which had the ticker symbol GNPK. The SPAC was known as Genesis Park Acquisition Corp. The transaction valued the new firm at around $615 million and aimed to raise the firm around $170 million in liquid capital, which includes a $100 million private investment in public equity, or PIPE. To describe Redwire crudely, or in a makeshift fashion, it's a collection of acquired space companies. The company consists of these subsidiaries. Adco Space, Deep Space Systems, Deployable Space Systems, Load Path, Maiden Space, Oakman Aerospace, and Rockall. Of course, for each of these videos, I'm sure I could even make an individual video to cover all the details. However, this video will simply give a simple overview of Redwire as a whole. As such, I will briefly describe each of these subsidiaries. Ad Coal Space specializes in the design, manufacturing, and testing of spacecraft components for low Earth orbit, geosynchronous orbit, and interplanetary spacecraft. Their focus is high performance sun sensors and star trackers or space cameras, among other things. They have been in the game since 1957. Deep Space Systems, or DSS, activities include space systems engineering, spacecraft design, development, and testing, and as it says in the name, they focus on deep space mission operations. Similarly to ADCO Space, they too also develop HD space cameras. This makes sense as in June 2020, ADCO Space and Deep Space Systems merged to form Redwire Space. DSS plays a significant role in NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program through the DSS Small Lunar Lander, which will provide reliable commercial payload transportation to the surface of the Moon. Deployable Space Systems, or DSSI, is a very interesting part of Redwire. If you've heard about Redwire before, you may have also heard about this. As the name suggests, the firm specialises in deployable space technologies. They design, manufacture and test space deployable solar arrays, among other systems. They are also developing other space deployable products with an emphasis on toughness and reliability in the very harsh environment which is space. I would say that the focus is largely on deployable solar arrays. Solar energy provides power for much of the International Space Station's research and science investigations, which are conducted on a daily basis. Current solar arrays, which were deployed in 2000, were showing sounds of wear and tear. Therefore, NASA acquired additional arrays from Spectrolab, a subsidiary of Boeing, and a major supplier, Deployable Space Systems, or DSSI. The solar arrays will use Rollout Solar Array ROSA technology, a product of deployable space systems. LoadPath specializes in satellite and space launch technologies. Some of their operations include thermal solutions such as their Veritrek software, which was used to study the effects of thermal designs and provide savings. This was applied to a NASA Mars 2020 helicopter and it's reported that the results produced in as little as 10 days would have taken over four months if traditional analysis techniques were used, according to the Thermal and Fluids Analysis Workshop, a part of NASA. They have also previously worked on a SpaceX Falcon 9 mission in 2018. LoadPath helped to enable the largest single US launched rideshare mission at the time through designing, making and testing critical payload adapters mass simulators and ground equipment. LoadPath also has had operations in terms of deployable structures and structural testing. Maiden Space is also a very interesting part of Redwire, which develops and manufactures 3D printers for use in space. They tend to focus on technologies which allow for exploration, national security and sustainable settlement in space. 
Maiden Space Zero-G printer was the first manufacturing device used in space. Maiden Space is currently working on OSAM 2, formerly known as Arconaut 1, as the lead developer, along with two other space-related companies. OSAM 2 is to be an in-space robotic precision manufacturing and assembly system. This will allow for on-orbit servicing, assembly and manufacturing capabilities. This will also allow for in-orbit repair or replacement of satellite components. Given constraints of payload capacities, the implications of this, if successful, are of course huge. The cost of space launches could prove to be dramatically reduced if part of the manufacturing could be done in space. Maiden Space has partnered with NASA, being awarded $73.7 million in 2019 to demonstrate the system. OSAM 2 will not launch any earlier than 2022. I have been able to find launches scheduled in both an Electron rocket and a Falcon 9 rocket in 2022 and 2023 respectively, however I am sure these days are very flexible and may change. Oakman Aerospace operates with three main product lines, Space Systems Engineering, Advanced Configurable Open System Research Network or ACORN, and Innovative Mission Payload Development. Space Systems Engineering broadly covers how to design and develop space system architectures. ACORN is a modular open system which is used for modelling and simulation. It's for simulating satellite missions regardless of the size of the mission or the mission itself. It may help develop completely new missions. Innovative Mission Payload Development is devoted to payload design. Rockor continues the theme of deployable systems as a supplier of highly reliable solar arrays and deployable boom products. They also design antennas, deorbit devices, thermal products and other emerging products. Deorbit devices focus on removing junk from space. This subsidiary of Redwire seems to complement the others quite well. Overall, they are dedicated to developing simple and low-cost satellite components. Since 2017, it's reported that they have delivered many flight systems to different customers. Redwire is teaming up with Blue Origin, Sierra Space, Boeing, the Arizona State University and Genesis Engineering to develop a first-of-its-kind low-Earth orbit LEO space station. The project, known as Orbital Reef, will be a new platform to carry on the proud legacy of the ISS. Orbital Reef will be developed in partnership with NASA and other international space agencies to create a space station which will allow the world to reap the benefits of space development. Redwire's microgravity research, development and manufacturing technology aims to disrupt many industries ranging from communications and biotechnology. This station will be used to advance space exploration as well as developing innovations to heal the sick, feed the hungry and improve life for all. For example, it may be possible to develop or manufacture certain products under zero gravity but not under normal conditions. Redwire's rollout solar arrays may be used to power the orbital reef. Furthermore, Redwire's other solutions could prove to be useful in terms of orbital reef simulations and research. Other Redwire technologies such as cameras, star trackers, sun sensors, launch adapters and more could prove to be useful in development. It's also important to remember that operations are not planned to start until the latter half of this decade and it is an estimation which perhaps should be taken lightly given Blue Origin's track record. Redwire's many operations, particularly made in space, could prove to be pivotal for this product to succeed. And given Redwire's diversification, it seems it could be well poised to be a valuable contributor to the project. Taking a dive into the most recent August 2021 investor presentation, some interesting statistics are the following. Redwire has had 160 plus satellite missions flown, 200 plus parts printed on the ISS, and has a roughly $280 million backlog, which is an important metric when considering space companies. The $280 million backlog could said to be dubious, based on the breakdown shown on screen. However, it cannot be denied that a contracted backlog 
of over $140 million is still very impressive. Whilst the merit of unfinished contracts is debatable, it's worth noting that including bid stage contracts could lead to a backlog of over $500 million. Redwire's market is wide and diversified, as shown on screen. They have solutions which address many different markets, for example the $218 billion market for commercial space products and services, the $119 billion commercial infrastructure and support industry, and the $47 billion US government space spend, and the $40 billion non-US government space spend. This equates to a combined market worth around $420 billion US dollars in 2019. If Redwire can gain even a tiny market share, this will lead to a huge valuation increase from the current valuation of around $750 million. Redwire boasts a large range of customers as displayed on screen, ranging from Boeing and the US Space Force in the defense category, to NASA in the civil category, and SpaceX, Relativity, and Blue Origin in the commercial category. Civil customers make up the majority of revenues with 52% of 2021 expected revenue to come from civil customers. One of Redwire's most impressive aspects is its cash flow. Redwire is cash flow positive today through marginal improvements gained by vertical integration and benefits of scale. Redwire achieved a free cash flow of $21 million in 2020, including benefit from networking capital. This is forecast to contract in 2021 to $17 million, but then return to growth to an anticipated level of $195 million in 2025. Adjusted EBITDA, a widely used but somewhat controversial measure of earnings, is currently positive. It's forecast to grow to $250 million in 2025, from a 2020 value of just $10 million. Revenue is forecast to grow to over $1.4 billion in 2025, from a 2020 figure of $118 million. This gives a forward price to sales of 0.53 using expected 2025 revenue. Although you may be understandably doubtful of this as estimate, it can be said that Red Wire is valued at a substantially lower level compared to other space companies. Given 2020 achieved revenue of $118 million, the price to sales is 6.4, which is relatively low. When comparing Redwire to other sp public space companies, it can be seen that their valuation is far more conservative. The image on the screen demonstrates this, however it's important to know that this data is out of date. Astra has a market cap of around $2.5 billion today, with an expected 2021 revenue of just $4 million. However, companies like Astra and Virgin Galactic focus on space launches, not one of Redwire's focuses, so these firms may not be directly comparable. Perhaps a better comparison is to Momentus, who have a market cap of around $850 million, an expected 2021 revenue of $19 million. Of course, this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison, but Redwire seems to have a far better relative valuation on the whole when comparing to many of the most popular space companies. It's important to note, however, that this table was created by Redwire, and as such, the data may be presented in such a way that makes the company look good, or as good as possible. Regardless, I think it's undeniable that Redwire is relatively good value, especially when considering other valuations of comparable companies. The reason for this may be due to its structure as a collection of subsidiaries, rather than one large contained organisation. For example, investing in a small or microcap stock which could encompass each of these sub subsidiaries on their own, may be seen as riskier than investing in one larger whole, which encompassed the whole $750 million market cap. As an investor, you'd be more likely to cast doubt on a smaller company. This is just food for thought, and of course, it can also be seen from the other side as a positive diversification. Redwire is diversified into many different industries within the commercial space economy, and as such, if the space economy succeeds in growing at astonishing rates, it could be said that it's likely that if handled correctly, at least one section of Redwire will be able to uh, capitalise significantly. As such, I think the structure of Redwire could be seen as a double-edged sword, in which it becomes more of a positive as Redwire establishes itself and finds a more stable position. Regarding their book value in terms of balance sheet, I will be using their 2020 year financial statements.
their total assets were $167,724,005 compared to the total liabilities of $42,409,421. In terms of pipe dilution, I believe that there were 11,853,653 shares subject to possible redemption at the end of 2020 with a value of $10.15 per share, giving a value of new shares at a possible value of $120,314,578. The total shareholders' equity was $5,006, which demonstrates there's only very little in terms of book value available to shareholders. This leads to the obvious conclusion that Redwire isn't valued based on book value, but on things such as patents, leading technology and growth of revenue. Of course, by no means is this a comprehensive dive into Redwire and all of its subsidiaries. This should only serve as an overview and should not lead to any investment decisions. I've attempted to give the most attention to the details which are in my view the most important, however it's inevitable that I've missed out some key information at points. For example, you can see from a section of the investor presentation I'll put on screen that I'm only scratching the surface when it comes to Redwise potential impact in space commercialization. If you notice any missing important points, then please leave this in the comment section below as this will benefit me as well as all the others watching. Please leave a like if you found this video useful and subscribe for more stock overviews and general finance and investment related videos. Thanks for watching.